But I was sharing with Pastor and 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 uh, Minister Sherry last week. We were eating, and I was saying I was saying this because um, there are some uh, uh, issues going on in in the body. And I, I'm not, you know, I've shared this before that you know in 2005 um, the doctors diagnosed me with uh, type two diabetes. And um, anyway, I've been standing firm and doing things and, and just really uh, uh, feeling good. And then, I don't know about you, but I get lazy. Do anybody get lazy? I get complacent. You know, I have those times when I have, uh, it's not amnesia, but <laughs> it's, it's, I think it might be. You know, it's like, you ever, you ever get up in the mornings and you say, you know, you just sit down and go, dang, this, you know, you just sit there. You just vegetate. You just, and, and, and I, I have to be so honest because I really do like Good Morning America. Who else like Good Morning America? Come on, girl. I like Robin and the rest of them. And so I've been on this kick of just doing Good Morning America. Okay, I'll be on the CNN News. Okay, MSNBC. <laughs> I don't do Fox. No, I'm just kidding. I don't. <laughs> but all of a sudden, and now this didn't just happen. This didn't go one week. Because I know y'all don't do this. It didn't go two weeks. Because I know y'all don't do this. It did not go three weeks. Dang. Is this confession? I need a priest. <laughs> it didn't go one month. I know, Paula. Can you believe that? Yeah. It didn't go two months. Okay, I'm quitting now. I ain't going to get it. Okay, it went a while. <laughs> and in it going a while, I didn't, I started not to feel good. And I didn't have energy. I didn't have no get up and go. It had already went. It left. So then, you know, you still don't run to Jesus first. I ran to the energy drink. I know y'all don't do this. Y'all don't drink them monsters and them Red Bulls and them, you know, I, I find them little dollars. You know, I'm cheap. I, find, I, I, I go frugal. <laughs> I, I go frugal. I get them little dollar seventy four energy packs that you throw in a gla uh, the bottle of water at Walmart. They really are off the chain. And, and so I started doing those. And uh, and uh, I would feel energized for a little bit, but I still felt bad. And so I was like, "Dang, I feel bad." So I was laying in the bed one morning. Contemplating, should I get up or should I hit the snooze? And it was like my mind started talking to me. You know what it is that has helped you feel better. So I laid there and I said, no, let me go try this. So I go downstairs. And I pick up my scriptures and confession book. Now, I believe in confession. I believe in confessing out loud. I believe that my faith is voice activated. I believe that the word of God is alive, active, and energizing. You should have showed up before I tried it. And the first day that I did that, it was like energy and strength came up in me. And I was just all at work, and oh, I was just bebopping around. And, and, and all of a sudden, I heard, speak the word only. Now, we know that to be attached to the Centron soldier who went to Christ 
to plead for his servant who was at home dying. And I don't want to use it in recognizing as so much as the authority. I want to use it as where he, he sent out, first of all, he sent someone out to get them to, to get Jesus to come because he himself didn't feel worthy to go. But then all of a sudden, as Jesus said, I will come, he goes out to meet him. He said, ah, he didn't even let Jesus get there. He said, listen, it's something about you that I know that you're in authority. There is authority in the word of God. So all I need you to do is speak the authority of the word and my servant shall be healed. He didn't even have to go close ah, because Jesus said, the word of God says in Isaiah, he sent his word. I feel a preach coming on. He sent his word and healed them. I love this part because the Bible says where he sent his word, it shall prosper. Oh that you can he sent Jesus and it wasn't anything empty about the word the word fulfilled the purpose for what it was sent Jesus said God said to me all you got to do is come into agreement with the word and send the word speak the word only speak the word only and I could have had an opinion in fact I did but I realized that that one day so I got up and I said I'm gonna keep trying this I did it the second day see I, look, look look in your situation and what you are facing in the kingdom the language and the words have already been released all we have to do is come into agreement speak the same thing <laughs> speak the word and and my bible says that at that very moment the man goes back and his servant is healed. Because, now think about it. Jesus is the word. Is the word alive? It, just think about it. The word is alive. Sit down in heaven at the right hand of the Father. Not only is he sit down, but you and I are in him. Sit down should be resting, speaking the word only. Ah, no, 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 no. When you know, you know what? I know you're looking at your finances, and and, and you're saying because you're speaking words either way it go. Uh, you're speaking words either way it goes. So I love to talk about finances because finances have us messed up. Because it's either not enough. I, I don't know anybody in here got too much. I need y'all to raise your hand because I need another offering. <laughs> Who got too much up in this camp? Uh, so I'm talking to folk that feel like there is not enough. But when you speak the word only you don't speak what's in the bank account you call those things that be not as though they were you are calling non-existent things that you don't not see that are in a spirit world that God has placed to release upon you into an existing situation so what you've got to do is you know we had a man come say a long time ago I don't even know where he's at now but he used to say all the time, money cometh and remain. Be Roy Thompson. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Money cometh and remain. Now, see, that messes folk up. Listen, when God told me to prophesy over my checkbook, that was, say what? 
He said, well, you prophesy over everything else. Why don't you speak to the checkbook? Speak the word only. See, because when you pull up the checking account, you see what Jethro, uh, <laughs> but not, not, double, not. Art, art, double art. I bought a cement pond. Thank you. So when you look at your First National Bank statement and you've got more bills than you've got money and what you start speaking over it is, I'll never have enough. You want to set income, but you always speaking, there's always more bills than there is money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you're speaking a word, you're prophesying over your finances, whether you know it or not. And either the Bible says you are either releasing or you are trapped by your words. And, and, and because fear is the emotion that is attached to you speaking that word, Job said the things that I have feared have now come up on me. Now y'all know I thank you, Father, because I need study. This hot off the press. I went home with the sleep. This hot off the press. I'm going to eat this. It tastes pretty good. Uh-huh. See, because, because, because there is a vibration. I love this because everything that is made was made by him. Come on here. Come on here, Holy Ghost. Everything that's made was made by him. So when you speak the word, the atoms, the neutrons, the protons, hear the word and respond. There is a vibration in your voice, speaking it in faith, that will cause multiplication in your finances, in your health, in your prosperity. But you got to call yourself blessed. <laughs> you got to call yourself blessed. You're speaking what you're having instead of what you desire. Exactly. Kingdom, because the thing of it is, God, I hear God saying right now, if you rest in me, you will begin to see the kingdom manifested in your finances, in your home, in your life, in your checkbook. If you will rest in me, for in my kingdom there is more than enough. For in my kingdom there has already been provisions made. But you are so busy worrying about where do I get this? What do I eat? Where do I sleep? That you're not hearing that I've already made provisions. If you'll wait before me, you'll understand and see that it's over here and it's over there and it's yonder. And I've commanded those. Oh, God said so there's some widow women that I've commanded to feed you. Maybe I won't study next week. Good God Almighty. My, 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 my. Mm. Woo. He said, did not my servant Elijah speak forth my word to cause the heavens to shut up and did I not because of him cause the widow woman to speak and he goes and he says to her make me a cake first put me first and you will cause I will cause your meal barrel and your oil not to run dry get me up out of here get me up out of here my mama, 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 my mama. Mm. Mm. 
I need this CD before I leave. Ma, 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 ma. Speak the word only. Your children are not acting proper. Speak the word only. Your body is not acting correct. Speak the word only. I understand Siri. Don't get don't worry. I got it. I understand Siri's understanding too. Come on, girl. Mama, 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 mama. The Lord says, uh, the Lord says, go find the house that you want. Go find the house that you want and begin to speak to it and begin to call it yours and begin to say that the finances are yours. Don't look at the credit. Now, begin to believe me. I've got a plan for you to be a homeowner. Speak it only. Mama, 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 mama. Mm, mm. Mm. I'm trying to shut up. I really am. Because somebody else wants to talk. Yeah. I told Bessie, that's my car. Baby, I done put you in the garage now. Come on. You need to last mama at least five more years. I'm, I'm telling you, baby. I know you got 161 miles on it. I know you got some lights that's dinging. But that's all right, baby. I'm going to take good care of you. I know you hear me because you matter. And you are matter. And because you matter, you are in atoms and neutrons. And per so I'm speaking the vibration that you will not wear out just yet. I need you to last a little bit longer because I don't want no car payment, Bessie. Bible says I can have what I say. Yeah. I'm speaking the word only. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Mm. Look, 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 look. We, we, we sung that song, Deuteronomy 28. We sung that song, Blessed in the City. Yeah. Uh, oh, you got to get up every day and say that. Because, because I'm not going to be blessed. I, I, I'm already blessed. So when I go somewhere, the blessings follow. The blessings accompany me. You don't understand. So when I go in a place, because I'm light and I'm salt and, and I walk in the place, the atmosphere got to shift because you can't be staying the same place with the blessings. Either you're going to get uh, mad <laughs> and leave or you're going to come on into fellowship. But if I'm blessed, and the Lord says, I have, I love this. I have already, now this is Old Testament. I have already commanded yeah. blessings. Yeah. And check this out. Can't nobody curse as Balaam. What God already done blessed. Ha! He know I like clothes. He know I like shopping. I got two more extra closets. <laughs> you better say that. Speak the word only. I love this. Thank you, Lord. I reign on the just and the unjust. Folk don't know they bless. So it's up to you and I in the kingdom to tell them, you blessed. Why can't you call them, you're a man of God. They staggering. They blowing. They huffing. They drinking. How many of you know they don't realize they blessed? 
So it's up to you and I for the kingdom language to go around. See, the thing of it is, when you tell them you're blessed, in that means prosperity. In that means wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. In that means you're already delivered. Just partake of your deliverance. In that means you're already healed. Just partake of your healing. In that means the trauma is removed. Just uh, uh, by his stripes, you've already been blessed. Mm. If you just walk by, see, if you just walk by what you think is the crack house and bless it. Yeah. If you just, if you, while you driving by, and there's a whole bunch of them, and I'm going to start doing that. Because they on every corner begging. I don't know if it's their job. Or if they really need. But my whole point is, why don't you bless them? Because God says, I'm raining on the just as well as the unjust. Because when it rains, it don't matter if you're on skid row, prostitute row, or in the mansion, or the White House. Rain is rain. And it falls everywhere, do it not? God don't just order it on us. And that's one thing we don't got so caught up in our Christian movement that it's just us. Bless us and no more. But how many of you know, if we disperse the seeds of blessing... Let, let, let me tell you what, let me tell you what, let me tell you what I know, what I know, what I know, what I know. Because you're already blessed. Wherever your assignment is that you're working, if you get the mindset, I'm already blessed, God will bless you, but he has to bless everybody else in the office because that's the kind of God that he is. But because you are there, everybody gets blessed. When you get a raise, everybody get a raise. Y'all don't understand. You think he just put you there. No, he put you there to be a blessing, but also to bless you. Uh, uh, in fact, he didn't put you there to make a living. That's right. Amen, Walls. That's right. That's right. He put you there to have seed yeah. Yeah. to sow. Now, he put me there to pay my bills. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He put you there to have seed to sow, to give him first. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. When you put me first and there's meat in my house, see now if I will not open up the windows and give you generational blessings. I believe that with everything in me. Speak the word only. And I'm closing. Whew. My, 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 my. Mm, mm, mm. Look at this, look at this, look at this. I just want to read this real, real fast, real fast. Oh, my goodness, oh goodness, goodness, goodness. This is really good because it's for now. Mm -hmm. Now, verse Deuteronomy 28. Can I just read it real fast and then I'm going to let the win. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. Now, now I, I want you to know this is a present word. This present tense. It ain't talking about yesterday. It's talking now. Present tense. Now. It shall come to pass. Look, look, look at your neighbor and say, whatever you're going through, it came to pass. <laughs> if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all his commandments. Now, he don't have but a few. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Now, when you fulfill the love commandment, you got it all. Because when you fulfill the love commandment, you ain't going to steal, lie, cheat. Wrong with those that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> mm, look what he says, look what he says. I, I love this, I love this. Carefully all his commandments which I command you today, this is the Lord talking, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all, uh, somebody say all. Uh, all means all. It leaves nothing out. All these blessings 
David said, forget not all of thy benefits. Whoop. All these blessings shall come upon you. Look at this. And overtake you. You, you know, that, 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 I'm, I'm too blessed to be stressed. And, and if you got stress, some of that stuff you can get out your own life. I never forget, God said, you get to stress out. And then you start eliminating some stuff and eliminating folks and eliminating doing so much, running you to and fro, and all of a sudden stress ain't in your life no more. Get rid of that person that is not pouring into you but always taking from you. And all these blessings shall come up on you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. See, you got to come with some obedience. Obedience is, he said, give. I didn't get no, thank you, Pastor, for that one. He, he said, give. I, I want y'all to get it because it, really it really is in me. Because it really is in me. Because I done seen him multiply too much. I done seen him give you ten, me $10, you know, and it lasts. I, can, I done seen sales that come out of nowhere and you can feed the family. Y'all too late. You're too late. I showed up before he blessed me. Mm, mm, mm. Blessed shall you be in the city of McAllister, of Arpaler of T-Town, of Houston, of Fort Worth. Blessed shall you be uh, in the city. And blessed, look at this, look at this. And blessed shall you be in the country. This is futuristic as well. This is now. Amen. This is now. Because he said now. Amen. Faith is a substance of thing hoped for now. Blessed shall you be in the fruit of your body. My daughter took that one literally. Okay. <laughs> the produce of your ground and the increase of your herd, brother Tom, and the increase of your cattle and the offsprings of your flock. Now, you think our paler ain't rich. I see more cattle running around here than I don't even know what these things are half the time. I saw some buffaloes. Yeah. I want to see them in the cowboy movies. <laughs> but you're blessed. Look at this. Blessed shall you be in your basket and in your kneading bowl. That's in your food. Huh? And, uh, look, uh, my, 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 my. I remember one time, I, I'm really going to close. I remember one time when I was married and, and, and I still had the poverty mentality and he did too. And, and, and there was a little bit of food. And the Lord said, see, he always told me because I talk a lot. So he told me, he said, go in there and call in everything you want to eat. Open up that pantry and call it in. Well, wasn't nobody home. See, that's what prophetic people do. You ain't got no sense. <laughs> he said, you just do it. Prophetic people, we always, got, <laughs> we always got these demonstrations, these acts. I went in there to that pantry because at that time, my kids were teenagers, and he was full-time, and, and I was late, uh, not working, and, and, and the folk that, that I was taking to the to the thing to get groceries I almost had to be there myself oh y'all don't hear me I went in that kitchen and I called in green beans I called in everything we could think of kangaroo wise I called in meat and all of that this is the God honest truth I went we had it was had, I think it was on a Wednesday night because I remember us going to church we went to church this is a God honest truth when we came back because we left uh, one of the doors open. There was two large boxes of groceries sitting in the floor of our house with an envelope on top. And you know what it was? It was every green bean, corn, mashed potatoes, and, and carrots that I wanted for my children to eat. And it was full of meat. Do you, see what I, do you see what I'm saying? This thing works for me. I ain't telling you something I heard. I'm telling you what I know. That's why I know. Yeah. Put him first. I double dog dare you. I double dog dare you. Put him first. Give him first. 
write his check out first as an act. You say, okay, Marcia, I'm sorry, baby. I know I'm messing you up. I don't know how to tie it. If you don't want to tie it off the gross, tie it off of what you bring home. If you can't start there, tie it half. And God will give you the increase. But he wants the whole. And the thing of it is, is that he owns it all. But if you will take your paycheck and give him first. Try him, baby. Try him, baby. He ready to open up some doors. Try him. Try him. I would write God's check first. I stayed in jail over some dogs because I would not give my tithes. My brother had to come bail me out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I already said this before. For those that's going to be listening, yeah, because Erica liked dogs. They, they wanted to make me pay because he took him to the dog pound, and I wasn't paying because they took him to the dog pound because he wasn't on the leash. I didn't care. So the man said, ma'am, if you come get the dog, I'm going to have to write you a ticket. I'm like, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Watch me pay it. Well... You didn't have to watch me pay it because uh, <clears throat> they picked my butt up. <laughs> and the thing of it is, is God kept giving me a dream over and over and over. I was going to jail. <laughs> what was he doing? He was warning me, Marcia, go pay the ticket. Yeah. But I couldn't see that I had enough. But let me tell you, even in the midst of that, God worked. I had went and got groceries. My grandmother was living with me, and the police pulled me over, ran my car tag, pulled me over, got my driver's license, and said, uh, ma'am, uh, there's a bench warrant out for you. I said, a what? <laughs> what are those? <laughs> and I was like, he said, ma'am, I'm going to take you down. I was like, now, sir, listen. That's a young guy, too. But God... What you saying? All things work together for good, and God is in the mix of it all. I said, sir, I said, I just bought groceries. My grandmother's at the house with my children. I said, could you just let me take the groceries home to my, to my kids so they can eat? The man leaned over. He said, ma'am, he said, if you promise me you won't run, I'll let you drive your car and take your groceries out. I said, sir, I won't run. I get in the car, I drive to my home, I take the groceries out, and I said to, uh, we called my grandmother, Mom B, I said, Mom B, uh, I'm going to jail and I'll be right back. <laughs> Mom B said, what, baby? I said, I'll be right back. So I'm thinking this man's going to handcuff me, put me in the car. The man comes up to me again. He says, ma'am, if you promise me you won't run, I'll let you drive to the station because you won't be there long. I said, I won't run, sir. I called one of my prayer partners back then. I said, I'm going to jail. Y'all pray. <laughs> like that was going to get something. And I don't know. I called. I called my brother. <laughs> and at that time, my brother was still really in the world. And he was uh, what we call, you know, he was a drug dealer. And he's making big money. And I said, hey, I'm going to jail. Can you get me out? And you should have heard what he started saying. Blankety, 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 blankety. I said, okay, well, all right. So he was playing domino, so I interrupted his domino game. So the man took me on down there. God was so good. The man took me on down there. And they fingerprinted me, so I'm on fingerprint down there. And... Then they told me they had to search me. Now, that's when it got ugly. Because they had this woman come in, and she didn't know that the man was nice to me. <laughs> and so she had me spread. <laughs> so I'm spread, and she started. I was like, whoa. And she, she slammed my butt up against that wall. I was like, oh, she for real. <laughs> Oh, this heifer's for real. Uh, ain't no, she ain't joking. And so I went through that, but I felt so much like a criminal. You know, I felt so bad. But uh, now I'll tell you how, how holy I was, honey. I took my Bible. I didn't know how long I was going to be there. But I know me and Jesus was going to have a talk. If we was going to have a talk, I was going to start the jailhouse ministry, which I was already doing. So I thought my, I might see some of the inmates. So the man, they were so kind. They said to me, they said, ma'am, we're not going to even put you in with general population. 
we're going to put you over in this little room and hold you because you won't be here long. All I could hear was my high brother. They got all the things they need to be doing. Why they hang up? Blankety, blankety, blank with this Christian woman. Blankety, blankety, blank. I was like, dude, could you just shut up and get me out? Then he picks up the phone and goes, how much money you got? I was like, none. You know why? Because all I had was my tithes. All I had was my tithes. And the jailhouse rock was not getting my tithes. So I said, none. Oh, all right. I tell you these so-and-so, 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 so-and-so. I was like, dude, could you just get me out? So he got me out, and then they gave me a court date. But I went home, and I felt so dirty. I felt so dirty. But I remember when I sat down and thought about it, I was like, God, this didn't even have to happen. Because you gave me not one, not two, three different dreams, three different times that I was going to jail. And that was the warning, I need you to go ahead and take care of this ticket. Because exactly. I ended up having to pay ticket anyway. Exactly. And they said, now, ma'am, the next time you think you don't have the money, make some payment arrangements. <laughs> you got that? But I don't think I'll be back in here no more. Because Erica's not getting another dog. Not in my house. Yeah, that's why I don't like dogs. Dogs called me. Dogs took me to jail. Fifty dollar ticket. No, we don't do dogs. Mm -mm. Okay. Try, not try. Do. Pay. You, you don't owe him. And all he's asking is, if you'll give me. I, just, I really want to just start with the 10th because I, I just really want to start there. If you'll give me the 10th, I'll show you how to live off the 90. And when I started trust, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. God has blessed. God has given me things and opened up doors. And then when I would not figure out how to do it, he said, what have you paid for? And I would say, nothing. He'd say, well then, trust me. Because at 63, it don't make no sense buying no condo. Because my, my life tells me I'm too old. But how many of you know God did? Thank you, brother. Come on. I challenge you. Speak the word only. And the blessings will run down and overtake you. Okay. Uh, could you ladies come up from the, uh, uh, what do we do this weekend? <laughs> The conference, the conference. Come on, ladies, come up. I'm sorry. I was going to use a short little word. But God is so good. I love when God does stuff like that. Because I'm telling you, I ain't, I, ain't I ain't studied. I just had that word drop. And that was it. <laughs> and I'm like, Papa, I just got to say thank you. Holy Ghost, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is not all of us, but. Uh, even from here, it's not all of us. You can sit down, sweetie, if you want to. Yes, thank you. Um, but uh, here again, uh, I, I, I want to say, looking all of you in the face, I, I can't say thank you enough for, for being there and, and following. And uh, I just, I love you. I really do. I really do. Um, I'm going to let April start. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, I gave the mic. <laughs> okay, so I guess are we talking about what we got or something? 
Okay. Well, mine would be a little bit different because this was a grand learning experience for me this weekend because it's the first conference we've ever done and I get to assist Marcia and along with the team. So I gained a lot of new insight and knowledge and wisdom and all of that good stuff. And um, one little thing that I got, you know, one of the things that God said to me, uh, we were talking about um, destiny and um, what we are to be doing with our lives and um, how we tend to search for destiny. But Pastor had talked a lot about her home and how the things she did in her home with her family was was a big part of her little piece of the gospel and God was like well you've been doing it for seven years and you know how to do it so just keep walking in it yeah yeah would you like to go next wow this was really a God appointed time for me because you invited me several months ago, and I prayed about, do I, am I supposed to go to this? Because I thought, well, Lord, I've already been to a women's conference this year, and he said, yes, you're supposed to go to this. So <laughs> so it was amazing, and I came from Fort Worth. That's where I live, and, and just driving up, I just, the Lord said, you need to be praying about the conference in advance. Don't just go, but prepare your heart to receive what's going to come out. And so I did, and it was amazing. <laughs> I got um, the your worship pastor, the Lord gave him a word for me, which was a confirmation. I know it was the Lord. The things that he was saying, the Lord had been speaking to me about in my own personal Bible time um, at home, about my life and just seasons of my life and where I'm at now and what's coming next. And, you know, I'm in transition. My daughter is a college student here in Oklahoma. She's a second year college student and Ooh, it's different when your your child is not at home and you only have one and it's just you. So, you know, that transition was kind of what's been happening, is still happening, but that word was confirmation of what the Lord has been saying to me. And then, but really the conference as a whole blessed me because, oh, there's more people down there, so I need to make this fast. <laughs> but it just, it, I was blessed because to be ministered to as a woman of God and a woman uh, walking in my authority. And what you ministered, Pastor Paulette, about um, the women evangelists, that was powerful. And it was not just, you know, I was telling you the other day that I have take, or today, I have takeaways from that. It wasn't just, oh, that was a good word, praise the Lord, now back to business as usual. It really was a charge to us to take it and um, do what we're supposed to do and f walk it out and bear fruit in it. So it's powerful. All the April. Amen. I know this time was different. It was a conference more than a retreat. Um, I kept going back to, I love our retreats. It's peaceful. It's quiet. We're in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I kept going back to, um, this is so much different. This is not like our normal retreats. Um, but by the end of it, no, because I don't like change. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do well with change. <laughs> I like to hold on. Um, but by the end of it, I realized that the difference was good. I needed the difference. Um, we all needed a difference. Um, and so by the end of it, I understood why we did a conference instead of the retreat. And um, there was so much that came out of the conference um, with everybody speaking and with, with feeling a little bit of that emptiness that was there and understanding a little bit more of what that void is and how to fill that void. So, it was good. I went okay with the difference, but by the end of it, <laughs> the conference was good. <laughs> well, all of it was so good, I can't even start 
to even explain all the things that you Can you hear it? Well, mine, it started off in the, mi- m- 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 what do you call those people that did that? Mimes. Oh, my stars. I mean, that hit my spirit so heavily. I heard the song. I felt the song. And it hit my spirit so hard. And uh, then here comes Pastor. <laughs> and uh, she ministered in a way that I haven't heard you minister. I mean, it hit me in a way that I can't even explain because it was the simple women, simple women like us that made the change. You know, just little things. But they made the change. And we can do the same thing in our work, in the store, anywhere. And I'm going, I needed that awakening. I really did. And it was just (laughs) one thing right after another. The people that we met, even the people that we didn't even have in our group. I got to talk to the women next door. I got to talk to people in the lobbies. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, the words just came. And I'm a people person anyway, but it was different. It was uh, I, I can't explain, but thank you. Thank you so much much for changing this up. I'm like April. Sometimes I don't like change. and <laughs> But this was good. This was really makes you grow up. It, it made me grow up and say, hey, okay, Arlene, this is what you need to do. Okay. Amen. Well, um, I think what it did for me, it was all wonderful, this it just confirmed that I'm fulfilling my, de- my destiny. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was born under difficult circumstances. But you know what? It was God's plan, not anybody else's. So I have been fulfilling my destiny all my life. And so it was just a big confirmation to me. I don't have to sit around and go, what is my purpose? Why am I still here? Um, I had said to April, before you ever said it, I said, just be. Just be. And that's the word to me is, just be who you are. Don't try to be anything else. And I'm not. I'm anointed vocally. <laughs> and, and so I do that wherever I go. And so I am an evangelist. And so it's just a big confirmation to me. And it was all wonderful. The difference was good for me. I got to spend a lot of time with my daughter and everybody else, so it was wonderful. Everything was wonderful. I haven't been to a um, conference or retreat in a couple of years, so this is my first, and it was just such a flow and a peace among everybody, the whole place. Um, <coughs> and just reaffirm so much stronger that we are all destined to serve God and he doesn't lead anyone out. We all have a purpose and to keep on seeking him for that. So that I know I don't like talking about that. This conference for me was confirmation, left and right. Mm -hmm. I talk to God all the time. I scream at him. I yell at him. (laughs) You know, and he confirmed so many things for me. I had asked him to send me a girlfriend that I can have to talk to. I mean, my husband is my best friend, and I love him, and I confide in him, but we all need a girlfriend. And I got that girlfriend this weekend. You know, and it's just, you know, I bonded with Sherry, and it was just so phenomenal. 
was so phenomenal. And I think she needed it too. And then the whole conference, there was just all these words that kept coming that were just more confirmation over the things that her and I talked about. It was like we'd look at each other like, <laughs> we kept doing this, <laughs> you know, to one another. A and then Marcia confirmed another prayer for me. You know, she, she said that, she, that I don't have to speak when I come into a room. My prayer to God every day is I want to go out in this world but I don't want them to see me. I want them to see you in me. I don't want anybody to hear my voice. I want them to hear your voice in me. And, you know, and that was, that was huge. That was so huge for me, and I thank you. And, you know, and it was just good confirmation. Thank you. And I've been to other conferences, but I loved this one because it was so intimate. It really was. You know, I thought when I first walked in, I thought, oh, this is going to be small. But it was... It was wonderful. It was so intimate, and everybody loved each other there. You know, when they get bigger, they get a little colder, you know, and you don't know. You don't get to have the opportunity to get to know people. So this was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. I enjoyed it. I, there was the difference. It was a learning experience. And the helping with Marcia and the team. I think I put myself out more than I normally do, which was something new for me. And the learning, the, the destination thing, of what I've been doing is part of my destination. And it opens up your eyes that you're really where you're supposed to be. For me, it was... Um, confirmation that everything I'm hearing here change, be the change be kind and even with the people working in the hotel it was you be kind and they're so receptive to you and the ladies love them love on the people that are there Talk, be nice, be kind and they open up so much. And God told me yesterday, after Pastor, and then I love you. <laughs> um, you look through my eyes when you look at people. You don't see color. You don't see their circumstances. You don't see what they've done. You look through my eyes and you love them the way that I love people. And that's what the world needs. The world needs the love of God in people to see people. And I had a wonderful, wonderful time. And I love all of y'all. <laughs> and I know I'm honorary, but I can't help myself because I, <laughs> I have to do it. I have to do it. And I have to bother my roommate so much that... I think I drive her crazy, but I have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing, it was the time for us to get to know the new ladies that have come in recently. God just opened the door for some of us to go out and eat and stuff and get to know each other more. Uh, pastor's <laughs> preaching on the evangelist just blew out some more of my Pentecostal upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it was a time just to get away from me because of the circumstances I'm living in now. It was a break, and I needed it. I needed the rest. And just as you, you've said hundreds of times, you just have one voice. But when you said that just now, God said to tell you, he gave you one voice so the world would only see one. Uh, it was to me. It was really, really good, and I've been to the to some women conferences, and uh, our our theme was uh, daughters of destiny. That was awesome. And the first night was just be, 
you know, I got something from that. Just be you. That's, you know, what it's saying. And then the sex, then someone spoke on evangelize where you're at. Now, to me, a long time ago, evangel uh, evangelists came in and tore some stuff up and then left. But, he, you know, they're, they're saying you need to edify, exhort, lift up. That's a, that's a, you know, Kim was saying how I had to change some thinking because I'm good at tearing stuff up. You know that. <laughs> but I had to, I had to change some thinking, edify, exhort, and lift up. Yeah. So to me, you can change, you know, that's how you change the atmosphere. They spoke on changing the atmosphere where you're at. Yeah. Because where I work at is something special. <laughs> so you can change. I can. Ch it's some stuff I need to start doing. You know, change the atmosphere, lifting others up. Yes. Being, being nicer is really the top of my list. And not, and not just like Pastor said the other day, sometimes we just need to be quiet. <laughs> and now it's a, I got a lot. I got a lot. I did a lot of writing. Bernice, I don't even know if she got anything. She was so busy worried about what I'm writing, but I got a lot, and I, I had so much fun. You know, it was good. It was really, really good. I was amazed at experiencing other women share their gift. It was enlightening and especially with people that I'm not used to being with it showed me that I need to ditch the fear Amen. and step into the position that was prepared for me Amen. because because when there's a silent spot that's not supposed to be there everybody else misses something and that's what I got from it but I also got when our pastor was speaking to us, and she said she was a pioneer for women in the pulpit. Yeah. She's not a was, she's an is. <laughs> because over the years, she has taught us stuff that other pastors are just now receiving. That's right. That's right. You're right. And she's still a pioneer because, and we're all ahead of the game because of yes. her. And on that note, Pastor, <laughs> not quite the same. We don't have the movements. No, but receive this from all of us. Thank you. Thank you for who you are. Yes, thank you so much for everything that you do, who you are, for pouring into this retreat as you did. I know there were changes for you. So thank you. I, I, kn I know it was different for you, but it was very powerful. Amen. You stepped in there with the power that it was really different. It was. it was, and I thought, wow, as you step into the place that you're supposed to be in at this time, you have the opportunity to put the effort and the time into what you need to be doing. So it's, it's our honor to support you, but thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> that was different. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I didn't have to wrap, wrap up cords and tug stuff in and, yeah. and all of that I praise God for it but it was a powerful conference we were empowered yeah. to go I mean it's not a be empowered and stay in this room and talk to each other it is exactly and I hear every one of you saying it when you step your foot into that job yeah. that's where it is when you step your foot into your home that's where it is and so praise God Thank you, women of God, for bringing it on. Yeah.